This is Detective Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy romance film called Anything Else. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Jerry Falk, a young aspiring writer from New York who aspires to publish a novel someday, spends many afternoons talking in the park with David Dobell, a struggling artist who functions as Jerry's tutor. Jerry and David initially met at an intellectual comedian's agency at a business meeting with Jerry's longtime manager, Harvey who is terrible at his job. Jerry and David become great friends after meeting since they are both aspiring comedy writers seeking to get into the profession. They begin to have lengthy discussions about life and work. Jerry admits that he has a hard time parting ways with people. He's still working with his inept manager, despite his desire to fire him. David also recounts visiting a psychiatrist after becoming depressed when his girlfriend broke up with him. Jerry admits to having a girlfriend and talks at length about how lovely she is. They both promise to meet up again before saying their goodbyes. Then David recalls being in a cab years ago and, like Jerry, he was pouring his heart out about many deep philosophical topics. The cab driver responded to him, you know it's like anything else. This phrase stuck with David this whole time. Jerry narrates that David continues his day job as a public school teacher because he is too afraid of failing to write comedy full time. Jerry meets with his girlfriend Amanda that night, who is late for their anniversary dinner. However, as soon as Amanda arrives, she complains about how horrible her audition went. They agree to return home after squabbling and Jerry ends up eating a sandwich for supper. But that's not the only mistake. Hap, Amanda tells him that her mother is moving in with them after splitting up with her boyfriend, and his boss phones him unexpectedly to tell him that one of his clients doesn't like his work. Amanda drives him insane, yet he is madly in love with her. Jerry recalls the day he first fell in love with her. Jerry and his then-girlfriend Brooke were out and about when they saw Jerry's buddy Bob and his girlfriend Amanda. Jerry is so smitten with Amanda that he constantly finds things they share in common, things including books and plays and Amanda being an actor. Jerry tries to keep his feelings for Amanda hidden from Brooke. However, the next day, he contacts Amanda and asks her to meet with him. It turns out he's already waiting for her outside her house. As they spend time together, Amanda coerces Jerry into admitting that he has feelings for her. He succumbs to her wiles, no longer being able to resist kissing her. Amanda confesses having a crush on him since they met. Jerry returns home that night to find Brooke waiting for him. He excuses his absence and attempts to establish an alibi. Brooke discovers a girl's hair on his coat, exposing his lie. Jerry contacts a psychiatrist the following days because he has difficulty leaving people. He can't tell Brooke he's no longer in love with her, and after working with him for three years, the doctor isn't much help. Jerry's secret affair with Amanda continues. They even sleep together in a hotel room. Jerry acknowledges that he has yet to figure out how he's going to tell Brooke gracefully. Amanda claims that she has already told Bob without mentioning Jerry specifically. Brooke eventually discovers that her boyfriend is cheating on her and dumps him. In the present, Amanda observes her lover staring out into space. When confronted, Jerry responds that he remembers the first day they met and how they made love everywhere. The prospect excites him and he begins kissing and caressing her. Amanda abruptly pulls away. Jerry is disappointed since they haven't had physical contact in six months. Amanda then urges him to sleep with other women if he does not tell her about it. Jerry thinks the notion is ludicrous and refuses to participate. After a few days, Jerry confides in David about his relationship problems. David tells him to follow Amanda's advice. They go to a bar to watch a stand-up comedy show. As they leave, David asks whether Jerry heard an anti-Semitic comment aimed at them. When Jerry claims he didn't hear anything, David points out that he was preoccupied with the physically attractive girls frolicking about. Then he warns Jerry to be cautious because people are prejudiced and times are hard. When Jerry arrives home, he compliments David on his extensive knowledge of many subjects such as music and poetry. Amanda's mother, Paula, appears. Paula, who is trying to get back on her feet following a breakup, tells her daughter that with Jerry's help, she'll put some songs together for a nightclub performance. Despite Amanda's pleadings, Jerry is hesitant to cooperate because he is already working on a novel, but Paula disregards all of this. Jerry and David become closer as the days pass. They meet at the park and have long discussions, with David doing most of the talking. Jerry is taken aback when David haphazardly asks if he touches himself. It's a private matter for him, but he acknowledges to Jerry that he does and likes it. Then David claims that he inquired because he believes he should learn to rely only on himself. Before Jerry can process what he has said, David asks whether he owns a pistol, insisting that he have one for self-defense. David drives Jerry to New Jersey, explaining that he ordered a rifle for Jerry a few weeks ago because he doesn't own a firearm. David then takes Jerry to a military surplus store and begins selecting items for an ultimate survival pack for Jerry. Jerry now feels that the man he thought was brilliant is nuts. David shows Jerry how to use the gun at his house. He's practicing his aim when Amanda walks in and gasps at the sight of deadly weapons 
weapons in their home. Jerry frantically tries to explain that the firearms are for protection. However, the more he talks, the more perplexed Amanda becomes. As tension grows, David steps in to clarify the issue. Amanda refuses to listen, merely wanting Jerry to remove the weapons altogether. When Paula walks in, everything becomes even more chaotic. This time, Jerry refuses to let go of the rifle and attempts to have Paula intervene, but she ignores him, asking David for assistance with moving a piano. The tiny space appears cramped, messy, and noisy with four people in it. Harvey calls, asking Jerry about his availability for an upcoming meeting during the mayhem. Later that night, after dinner, Jerry persuades Amanda to stay in a hotel instead of returning home. Amanda dislikes the concept but is compelled to accept it. Irritated that she's been forced to stay in a hotel room, she instigates petty arguments with him. He tries to lighten the mood, but Amanda suddenly has trouble breathing and experiences severe nausea. She demands to see a doctor. At the hospital, Jerry is envious of the doctor, who enjoys examining his girlfriend and touching her chest. Amanda doesn't seem bothered by this either. Jerry then goes to therapy, but his psychiatrist tells him that if he doesn't get rid of the gun, he won't be able to continue the analysis. Jerry bumps into his friend Bill outside the restaurant where he's due to meet his manager. When Bill learns this, he remarks remarks that no one understands why Jerry does not fire Harvey because he is seen as a joke. Jerry says he will consider it. Harvey hands Jerry a new contract when they meet, because their existing one is set to expire. Harvey wishes to extend the contract of his sole client for seven years rather than three. Later that day, Jerry discusses it with David, who strongly encourages him not to sign the contract. Jerry feels terrible about firing Harvey since he knows he needs the money. Jerry, anxious to change the subject, inquires about Amanda. When David responds plainly that Amanda is cheating on him, he is shocked. He knew she was with someone else because of her eyes, not because he actually saw her with someone else. This is the final straw in convincing Jerry that David is a very disturbed individual. Despite this, Jerry's paranoia gets the best of him. After introducing an actress named Connie to Jerry at a party one night, Amanda leaves them to mingle with another guy. Jerry can't hear anything Connie says because he is preoccupied with staring at Amanda and her gentleman friend. When Jerry approaches the two, Amanda introduces Ray. She suggests that they drive at midnight to see the antique theater posters. Jerry declines since he has to work on his manuscript first thing in the morning, and Connie declines as well. When they go home, Amanda is unhappy, so Jerry asks if it's because she can't go for a drive with Ray. Amanda denies this, then accusing Jerry of having feelings for Connie. Their fight jolts Paula awake. She lets Jerry hear the ballad she's been playing on the piano. As Paula sings, the lover's mood is lifted by her lovely voice and the calming sound of the piano. The next day, while Jerry is working on his novel, Paula begins to play the piano. Jerry Jerry asks her to stop, so she does. Paula is worried, so she asks Jerry to grab the anxiety medication from the bathroom. When Jerry walks out, his face is pale, as if he has discovered a dreadful secret. Later, he talks about it with his psychiatrist, confessing that he couldn't resist the urge to open the case for her diaphragm, a type of birth control. It wasn't there, which confirms his suspicions. He finds the doctor to be unhelpful, so he seeks advice from David. He is encouraged to follow Amanda by the man. Jerry is initially apprehensive until David successfully persuades him. Jerry secretly observes Amanda Amanda and Ray wandering around outside the school. He feels he has finally caught her, but waits until she is about to leave that night to gather further evidence. To his amazement, she isn't cheating with Ray, but her instructor, whom he witnesses her kiss before she leaves. When Jerry gets home, he confronts Amanda about her teacher and the diaphragm case. At first, Amanda denies everything, but eventually admits to sleeping with her teacher. She adds that she still loves Jerry, but wants to find out if she can still be thrilled and passionate about lovemaking. And she can. Amanda says that she was concerned that there was something wrong with her, since she couldn't get excited about Jerry. She convinces him that she did it for both of them and begs Jerry not to leave her. Jerry chats with David the next day, who says, he doesn't trust Amanda. David advises him to get rid of the individuals taking advantage of him, such as Amanda and Harvey. He informs him that there is nothing wrong with being afraid and that it is natural for people to feel afraid, and Jerry is terrified of being alone. A short while later, while driving, David informs him about a career opportunity in California to write for comedy programs on television. He encourages Jerry to join him. Jerry, on the other hand, is thinking about Amanda. Then, just as David is ready to park, another automobile pulls into the parking space. David retaliates, but the two muscled men are too large for him, so he drives away unhappily. Jerry nags David for standing up to those thugs. He points out that it might have placed their lives in danger. But David immediately turns the car around and returns to the parking lot. He grabs a tool from the back seat, walks up to the parked car, smashes the windows, and drives away quickly before the owners notice. That night, while working on his novel, Jerry recounts that, while he is sure that David is a raving lunatic, he admires him because he did not accept the injustice done to them. He recognizes that there will always be people who resist, unlike him. Leaving Amanda and starting over in California on the 
other hand, is both tempting and exhilarating, but he's scared. He recalls the time that Amanda proposed a break from their relationship. Jerry tried to offer a compromise, but she had already decided to leave. During their time apart, Jerry dated another girl, but all he could think of was Amanda, whom he imagined being with during his dates. Then a few weeks later, just as suddenly as she moved out, Amanda returned as if nothing had happened. Amanda says she's back because even though she's making love with another man, all she thinks about is Jerry. Jerry gives in and they make love that night. His memories of the past are interrupted by Paula, who arrives with her boyfriend Ralph. They begin snorting a dangerous substance. Amanda scolds her mother for being so noisy when she knows she can't sleep. Paula urges Amanda to use the illegal narcotic, while Jerry tries to prevent her from doing so. Amanda agrees with Ralph when he says it might make you feel good about yourself. Later, when they're in bed, Amanda denies having feelings for her mother's lover. Jerry doesn't believe this because she seems to know too much about Ralph. Jerry justifies Amanda's actions the next day while speaking with David, blaming himself for being rigid and disciplined. When David finds Jerry holding his signed contract extension with Harvey, he snatches it, rips it up, and tells Jerry that he will no longer be working with Harvey. Later, Jerry and Harvey meet in a restaurant, while David keeps an eye on them without Harvey's knowledge. Jerry tries to break the news to his manager gently that he will not be renewing his contract. On the other hand, Harvey overreacts, raising a commotion until he passes out. Jerry becomes frantic and blames himself for listening to David. Jerry goes for a walk around town to gather his thoughts before heading home. Amanda arrives at home with Connie, who helps her prepare dinner. Jerry enjoys dining with them, but when he's alone in the kitchen with Connie, he feels compelled to touch her. He believes it is time to pack his things and go to California with David. Jerry visits his psychiatrist for one last time, seeking advice on the situation. The psychiatrist is useless again, simply directing the question back onto Jerry. David is thrilled when he learns of Jerry's choice and promptly resigns from his teaching position. Finally, he speaks with Amanda. Amanda admits to him that she has met someone and wishes to move out before he can tell her the news. Jerry is caught off guard, and while she admits to having an affair once before, he dismisses it. He eventually informs Amanda that he'll be relocating to California for a new career and Amanda is happy for him. Later that day, David meets with Jerry to inform him that he will be unable to travel to California. Jerry is astonished by the abrupt change of plans. In a shocking turn of events, David admits that a heated argument he had the night before led him to shoot the person. In the end, Jerry packs his belongings and departs for California without David. While he's in the cab, he sees Amanda with the same doctor who treated her at the hospital. It seems like his instincts about the nature of their relationship was right after all. His deep thoughts are interrupted by the cab driver, who asks what happened to him. Jerry replies that he is thinking about how bizarre life is and how it's full of incomprehensible mysteries. Well, you know, it's like anything else. The cab driver responds. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.